Hello everybody. My name is Meg. This is my channel. I live in my van. I have been living on the road slash on the trail for oh coming up on one whole year now. So it's been a very exciting journey for me. Um, currently I'm in Whitman, Arizona on my grandfather um, and my aunt and uncle's property. And I will be heading to the East Coast uh, early April, and I'll be out there for about maybe maybe two months, I think, out on the Appalachian Trail, and then I'll be back out here. But anyway, I'm hiking the Arizona Trail next week, so I'm just kind of trying to get loose and, you know, get into my body a little bit more so I can be a bit more in tune with it for the trail. So I am just doing a little bit of van yoga. So I like to crash constructs and in that I mean I like to do things a little bit against the grain I guess or opposite of the grain or just show people that like um, things don't have to be so things are much easier than we think that they are. So I want to show you how easy yoga can be right now. Because I'm just sitting on my couch, basically, in a van. <laughs> and I'm wearing a puffy jacket and a t-shirt that I got at Walmart for $3. And some leggings that my mom bought me for Christmas. Um, you know, like, <sighs> it doesn't have to be beautiful, y'all. I mean, it is beautiful in its whatever, in its, um, <sighs> in its rawness, in its realness. So basically yoga is just stretching <laughs> it's and breathing and feeling into your body and kind of like following along with whatever it wants to do <clears throat> I do like to sit in easy pose a lot oh for me just like that forward stretch is really good so it's Saturday night here it's 9.30 right now. Today was a very productive day. Today was a very productive day. What all did I do? I raked the orchard. I cleaned up in front of the garage a little bit. There's more to do and I have to get the um, sticks up from out there and I cut, I trimmed around another pecan tree. Oh, and I got that package from my mom. And I remembered, and I'm thankful that I got my package from John with the tarp tent in it. And my favorite kitchen knife. I got to use my favorite kitchen knife tonight on dinner. I made this kind of three bean chili, almost. It was like a, I'm going to call it a poor man's chili, because the whole thing was probably $5, and it made like a, okay, not that big, but a huge pot of chili. I put some freaking corn in it and it was actually sweet creamed corn but it was delicious my legs feel like they got some sun today good job legs you did a good job today this is just how i do yoga <laughs> i talk to my body i let it tell me what it wants to do it just got warmed up so My upper back, too, really wants, like, a whole lot of love. Sometimes I find, if you are like me and you have a lot of energy, um, you like to start moving first. Because <laughs> I can feel when I have energy trapped in my back, which is where it gets trapped a lot. Um, and that can cause a tenseness in your shoulders and just imbalance all throughout your body. If your spine is not aligned, you gotta um, 
seek your alignment. <laughs> and the best way to do that is through yoga, but um, it comes down to everything in your physical body is essentially a representation of your internal well-being. So if you are somebody that is manifesting illness right now, know that you are not alone first and foremost and um, you are okay. You are okay. You are okay. If you've made it this far and if you're watching this video, if you've been drawn to this video, you are okay. You are okay. You're going to be just fine. But um, just try not to worry about anything. Focus on the facts and ask yourself what there is really to learn from whatever it is that's ailing you. Whatever it is that's ailing you, be it physically or emotionally. If it's physical, that means it's emotional. That means that there is some sort of emotional, spiritual disconnect um, between you and your body, which is like all of the cells that you're made up of, so also your spirit. <sighs> Nighttime is like for the hippy dippy videos. <laughs> but y'all, this is really like how I flow throughout my day. You can kind of see now in my video style, probably like I can even tell that I'm creating my own patterns with, I've been trying to uh, vlog every single day. And I've also been for the first time watching back my videos, which I don't know, it used to always make me nervous, but now I'm like, if I want other people to watch my channel, then I need to watch my free channel myself and like believe in the things that I'm saying. Um, I will get more into detail and depth uh, on like my spiritual awakening journey in another video, in other videos, more than this, but in brief, my open heart surgery really did wake me up. Uh, it really, it really did <laughs> wake me right up. I didn't even know it on a conscious level back then, but um, I definitely know it now. And I was absolutely being guided back then um, because as much as I've been intensely looking at the Appalachian Trail or cancer or sage or quitting OTB or like all these little tiny things that add up to really um, a whole, they all equal a whole. They are some of their parts, which is like... Um, I've really been on this like active journey since my since my open heart surgery which has been six years so as you can see i've finally broken free my legs still want to be stretched so i'm going to stretch them on the counter um but it, it hasn't always been this way it hasn't always been this way it hasn't always been this way that's like the message that i want to shout to the world uh through my channel, at least right now, is because the big my one of my biggest missions is to show and to help people how to achieve their dreams. Um, like I was kind of the person who was sitting back a few years ago looking at Instagram accounts where I was like super jealous of everything that people were doing. And so much so that I actually stopped following all of those accounts. Anything that just for a time, because I realized my sensitivity to it, I was like, this is not serving me right now. So I stopped following all of those accounts. <sighs> And then I was like, well, what is wrong in me? Like, what is ugh, that word wrong? Um, <laughs> what is wrong in me? I'll just say it for now. But that's what I used to think. What is wrong in me that like, I, I knew I could be doing those things too. I knew in my heart that I could be doing those things too. I just didn't know how to do them. <laughs> and all I was doing at the time was just looking at those pictures online. I wasn't actually like um, going and doing the research and trying to figure out like how to go to those places. I was just like dreaming. And for the most part, getting jealous. So I stopped following those accounts for a while. And then I started to do a lot of inner work on myself. Um, this is like snapshot of like 
the past couple years, but I'll tie it all back in together here in a minute. So anyway, that was just one of the things that I did. Um, did some inner work on myself, and then I found myself wanting to look at those beautiful pictures again and dreaming. And then that was when the decision to hike the Appalachian Trail came into play. So I was like, yes, this is the life I want to lead. Um, these are the places I want to be in. And I just set off on a mission. But um, that mission started with open heart surgery. I the, To rewind, like recap my story a little bit, many of you might not know this. Um, after my open heart surgery, like crazy shit started happening in my life. <laughs> and I really can only laugh about it now. And like, I have been afraid to talk about these things for a while because I thought that if I talked about them, that like they were going to come true or something again. But I realized that it's not about the words. It's about how you feel. So like... Yeah, those things, they happened, but, like, I don't feel bad about them anymore. It's funny looking back, and the further back, <laughs> the further back I look, the funnier it is. That's like, oh, man, like, what's that type 2 fun? Like, the whole past six years have been type 2 fun, for sure. Um, so, anyway, um, <laughs> crazy shit started to happen, um, my boyfriend that I was dating at the time, he volunteered for a deployment. <laughs> and then I lost my contract with Radio Disney. They got rid of my job. And I was also, that's when I was filming training videos for American Eagle. And they, um, <laughs> they like moved the filming to LA or something just random. And I was so crushed by all of that. And long story short, I, and then I resigned from my job, my acting, um, job because <laughs> I just was like going nutty. So anyway, I was just bartending full time. All right. So I found myself like at this pit in my life where I was like, what the freak just happened? Like, what? am I being punished? Like, I really thought that I was being punished. I really thought that I was being punished by the universe for, and I'll tell you what I thought it was for it too. I like always had this concept in my head that like I was being punished for my sins or like something like that. And I didn't even understand the definition of sin, like at all. You know, it was very, a very confusing time. I was very confused and conflicted. Um, and, you know, I need to, it's something that I've been needing to release because I know that that no longer serves me. I know that um, holding on to those negative emotions, those, they, they no longer serve me. They no longer serve me. So <laughs> I know now that, I mean, I, here's the truth. I do not know why open heart surgery happened per se. I could try to give you theories on waking my ass up or, you know, kind of knocking me to my knees or helping me get out of my ego. I don't know. There's a number of possibilities, but the, it happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. And it's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I've been processing through a lot of those emotions lately. And being here with my grandpa on, you know, the breathing machine and going to appointments with him and stuff, it's it's been triggering some stuff in me, but it's all been for the good. Because <sighs> I feel like I'm, I've been epically purging so much stuff and it feels awesome. So anyway, I've been on this journey since open heart surgery because once all those things started to like crash around me, I was like, all right, what is going on here. Like, there's just got to be more. I don't know. I just, it, it just, everything kind of seemed too weird. And then I just, I was like, it's time to go. It's just time to go. It's just time to go. So I left Pittsburgh for a little while. I moved to Florida and then I had a job doing live infomercial shows, um, out of Nashville, but the company was out of LA. So I traveled all around the country doing these live infomercial shows and they were so much fun. So cool. Um, but I was working like seven days a week, <laughs> seven days a week. So I was really burning myself out. So when I went home for the holidays that year, I, 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 I like had a pocket full of cash and I was just like, I didn't have to work for a little bit. So I was just hanging around Pittsburgh until like a month or so went by and I was like, you know, I guess I better get a job. So that was when I started bartending at OTV North Park. Then I took over managing and then I took over as the general manager 
why, before I even had an apartment in Pittsburgh, I was living in my friend Melissa's apartment, like in her attic, took this job as GM and was like, oh, I guess I live in Pittsburgh again. So it's just funny, like recapping and recounting all of this, because it hasn't just been this last year, or these last two years of prepping for this trail and everything like this. I've been doing this for a while now, like a while. Even out of college, I moved to Colorado before moving back to Pittsburgh. So as you can see, there's like this Pittsburgh pattern. It was like this, the Pittsburgh vortex for me. It was like, it was home and I needed to make such peace with it before I could ever fully release it. And now I'm excited to go back there the next time. I'm excited to see my family and my friends. And that's new for me, but that's what it kind of, that's how I broke free from it. Um, and I didn't really realize that I had never like officially moved out of PA as many times as I've moved around the country. Um, until the other day when I got my Arizona license and I was like, wow, I'm really doing the thing now. So, um, you know, it's, it's taken a long time for me to build up this confidence, but it all came in the form of challenges for me and strengthening. And I, you know, I've, I feel like I've been like emotionally strength training, <laughs> vibrationally strength training. Uh, and I could go on and on and on about that, but it's been really good looking back, like reflecting and not, um, not looking, you know, not trying to pull, dig up anything from the past that's negative, but I've actually been really trying to think, well, if I'm gonna ever think about the past, it should just be good, you know? So I've been reflecting and thinking, wow, I've been on this journey for about six years now. Six years now, and I'm really doing the thing. So I feel like I've, I tried it all out. You know, I moved to Florida, I tried that out. Uh, okay, you know, didn't really like it that much, but there was just more to see. Went to Nashville. Nashville was cool. Traveled all around the country. Wow, that was cool. You know, I've been to 46 states now. 46, y'all. That's a lot of states. For a 30-year-old, I think, you know, I'm proud of myself for that. And I'll probably hit the rest of them within the year. Um, so anyway, what did I do after that? I took over as the GM at OTB. So I started running a multi-million dollar burger restaurant. Uh, this place was, is, <laughs> was is on a wait at like 10 in the morning on a monday especially in the summer times if y'all haven't been there go and check it out otb bicycle cafe north park boathouse pittsburgh pennsylvania plug <laughs> but well worth it tell him meg sent you so what else I did that for two years. And after that, you know, I really poured a lot of my heart and soul into that place. And I really did that out of the goodness of my heart. I, I gained a lot of strength and knowledge from working there, but I just wanted to do it so bad because I knew that I could. Um, and it was a great achievement for me, um, really kind of whipping that place into shape and getting it, um, working like a well-oiled machine. Um, I did really good work there and, and, uh, we had a lot of fun too. So, but anyway, that was, um, that's where I met John, John, um, John, my previous partner, um, was, is one of the owners there. So, um, he was my boss for a little while and then he stepped down from daily operations, but long story short, um, John and I, when we started dating, we really were the, we were the adventurers together. Like he instantly was like, yeah, like, oh, you want to bike? You like to hike? Let's go do it. And I was the same way. So that was how we ended up hiking the Appalachian Trail. And, um, you know, we parted ways in Tennessee, but it was, it, you know, it was, and it is a beautiful ending to a brand new start for both of our lives. I wish him all of the best. He has been nothing but kind to me and supportive in my life. And, John really helped me through a lot of um, my dark days. He was very much a um, strengthening catalyst for me. He looked at me and he said, Meg, you know, like he just saw me and it was like he saw right through my bullshit and he knew that I was better than I was being. He knew that I was better than I was being. And when I was able to hold a mirror up in front of myself and believe the same, um, that was when I really started to transform. And I'll share this with you guys on a personal note. The day that John and I walked our separate ways, I looked at him and I said, you know, it was a genuine, like, look, it's not you. It's me moment. I was like, I know that I can do this with you. I know that I can do this with you, but I just need to go and know I can do it on my own now. So, you know, I've done that and, um, I'm proud of myself for it. I felt like, I 
it's not like any fault of John's. I gave a lot of my personal power to John for a long time. Um, I, I realized in, in my breakup with him that I asked him for his opinion on everything. And, and I almost wasn't using my own voice. And this just came out of, it was just insecurity in myself. It, it wasn't anything he did. Um, again, he was nothing but supportive. Um, but it just, it, I don't know. I really transformed in that time. <laughs> I really have transformed. So anyway, I'm proud of myself. That's it. Like, I'm proud of myself. It took... Building up a lot of strength and courage and bravery to get to the point that I am. But I'm proud of it and I want to share this with everybody because I think it's important to talk about the things that other people aren't talking about and to show that a different kind of life can be lived and that we can love all the people in our lives. We don't need excuses for endings and it's okay to change. So in a convoluted, long 20 minutes, almost 21 minute way, that's a little bit of my story. So that started as a yoga session, y'all. Thank you, Prana. <laughs> and, and fascia. Like once I get into my fascia, y'all, the inspiration just begins to flow. And I'm not ashamed of that anymore. It's cool. Like watching my videos back now, learning how to do that. It's neat watching the progression of the excitement in me. <clears throat> Because I've always loved um, talking and expressing and making people laugh and uh, just feel better about themselves, you know. And I just don't know any way, any other way to do that anymore than by just being my damn self. Just being myself. Uh, and this is who I am. So these are the benefits of yoga. It's like I could write a whole blog post on it or I could just film a video and show you. Like... It doesn't have to be that hard. So now I'm going to go practice my ukulele. <laughs> I so badly wanted that to be like amazing and it just wasn't because I tried too hard. But uh, I'm learning right now You and I by Ingrid Michaelson, the one that goes, um, Don't you worry, there, my honey. We might not have any money, but we've got our love to pay the bills or rent. I can't remember. Well, maybe I think you're cute and funny. Maybe I want to do what bunnies do with you. If you know what I mean. And then it goes real high like, oh, let's get rich and buy our parents homes in the south of France. Let's get rich and give everybody nice sweaters and teach them how to dance. Let's get rich and build a house on a mountain, making everybody look like ants. From way up there, you and I, you and I. And then he goes. I gotta learn the rest of it. All right, on that note, y'all, this is probably like episode one of Meg Talks. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'll figure out what I'm gonna call these when I figure it out, but stay tuned. I love you all, thanks for tuning in, and uh, welcome to Van Life, welcome to my channel, welcome to uh, Infinite Possibilities, yeah. <laughs>